What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Peas World. Let's get straight into it. This is how I've cut men out of my life completely and how you can as well. I'm would you just post a picture on Facebook? That would have done it for me. Right now at 7B status, so there oh, is 4B. Super Saiyan 7B. Which is no sex with men, um, no marriage, no babies. I already do that. 7B is... It doesn't, it, it doesn't seem like it's that hard to do for you. <laughs> <laughs> and is it really you doing it or you just don't get enough attention as it is? the most extreme level of not having to interact with men at all. So the first thing is I'm very mindful about the media that I consume. I don't read um, love stories, dating rants. It's just not applicable to me because, you know, when you're consuming somebody's story, then you take on their energy and you take on their frustration and then it becomes your problem as well, especially if you're quite an empathetic person and you're very sympathetic. So instead I read um, educational content, true crime to keep me aware, uh, I love poetry about self-love and healing and anything to do with uh, enhancing my hobbies and bringing me closer to any goals that I have. So wait, hold on. <laughs> so, uh, what, what, what goals do you have as a woman? You don't want to start a family, you just want to be alone? Like, what is that? Dummy. I'm getting pissed off. It's been 72 hours since Trump been elected and we are not getting what we voted for. We're not. This man's just supposed to change the world in 72 hours? Is that what you really expect? And I'm pissed about it. Right. Have you ever started a new job when you start the new job? The first couple days, you're just getting through the syllabus. Like, you don't even know what's going on. This man, I know he's been president before, but he's just getting in there trying to figure out what's going on. I'm pissed because I could have sworn that these celebrities and these women on The View and all these places <laughs> said that if we voted Trump in, that they was gonna leave the country. Yeah, they did. And now I saw that the, the view, they showing up in black dresses just to mourn the president election, Trump being elected. That is not what y'all promised us. Y'all said that if we voted for Trump, that they will leave the country and y'all ain't boarded a plane yet. I love it. And I'm getting frustrated. Trump, you got to do something about this because I thought our vote was going to count. We did vote for that. That's what they're not understanding. We voted for y'all to leave the country. And I, I, I thought that I would be seeing airlines being, uh, you know, filled up. You, can, you know, tickets would be hard to get because all the celebrities, all of Hollywood, all of these politicians, these journalists that said that if you get elected, that they was going to board the plane and leave. I can't no more. You know, I, I vote ain't counting already, y'all. <sighs> I guess maybe I'll give him another week, but you know, time is ticking. Get on the plane. All right. I love it. I love it. She's actually absolutely cooking them. But a lot of them did say they was going to leave and then none of them actually left. It's like, why, why are you going to say you're going to leave and then not leave? I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they've won thousands thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they're going to fight for the money that you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for $12 million and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is, it's all free unless you win your case. Now, if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi, found in the description below, where you can start your free claim today. 4B movement has evolved into something so much more funnier than I could ever imagine it to be. They are shaving their heads. Honestly, that's probably the coolest part of it, to be honest. <laughs> so, you know, everyone that looks like a cue ball, you're like, how about no? How about no? Like, look, these women walking around looking like Dr. Evil. Fraternity! <laughs> a billion kerjillion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You just know every girl that looks like Dr. Evil just stay away.
Just make good riddance, because us sane women deserve prettier hair anyways. So not only are these mayo monsters sitting there holding back their bodies as if the whole world hasn't monster. smashed through it already like the Hulk, uh, but now they're shaving their heads to make themselves unappealing to men. Maybe perhaps they don't understand the only men they're hurting in this is liberal men, but that's not of conservative people's issues. They really think it's such a gotcha because they learned how to close their, well, disease-ridden salami pockets and shave- Salami pockets? Tuna tunnels? Gut lockers? Scrambled eggs between the legs? Pink tacos? Vertical smiles? And my personal favorite- <laughs> My personal favorite, the bearded axe wound. <laughs> She's gonna let this girl cook. <laughs> Their head to make themselves easily recognizable. She can't keep doing this, man. She she can't keep doing it. <laughs> she was cooking. If you are Get that a girl a freaking medal. A conventionally attractive man that appears to be masculine, like how society, you know, thinks of masculine, and okay. you have left beliefs. You don't even have to be a leftist. You can be the most centrist Democrat in the world. I don't care. You can be a moderate. It is time for you to pick up a podcast mic, and I'm not at all kidding. Because I would totally do it, but I'm a woman. They're not going to listen to me. And that's just a fact. The Democratic Party needs to completely revamp their messaging. And that starts with finding a left-wing Ben Shapiro. I made a video about this yesterday. We need to completely, from the ground up, rebuild this. What are you talking about? You have destiny. <laughs> He's a blue-pilled cuck. Isn't that what you guys wanted? There is a disconnect in our media nowadays. Because we might have mainstream media, sure, whatever. Let's go with that line of logic. But the Republicans have completely created these new spaces and then sent their people into these new spaces and taught them how to use them to get them to work for them. The top podcasts are all right-leaning. That's what young people are listening to nowadays. That's what people- I mean, she's got a really good point. People are, that's what people are using to get information nowadays. People don't watch the news. People don't read the newspaper. They listen to a podcast. The right has echo chambers. We need to create our own echo chambers at this point. So what do you want to do? You want to get all the soy? Wait, you, oh, so she's left-leaning, uh, dim. Okay, I was about to say. I thought she was on our side for a second there. But, I mean, the thing is, these left-leaning liberal podcasts are just jokes. Nobody want like, I don't think anybody really watched Destiny and thinks, oh, man, I really like what he thinks. His, his uh, debate acumen is what we watch it for. I, I think he's a great debater, probably a master debater. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as his ideologies, I think they're completely flawed. Being pushed out of the Democratic Party. Let's talk about it. What I'm about to say might really ruffle some feathers, but I've talked to them and this is what they are telling me. Right. I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just repeating what I have been told. I've started going into these spaces with these red-pilled men and genuinely asking them how they ended up here. And I really encourage us to actually hear what they are saying. The patriarchy has existed since the beginning of time. Nobody disagrees with that. The feminist movement was created as a result. Women wanted rights, absolutely. White women wanted to be equal to white men. That's why feminism was created. Continued to gain ground and traction. We started blaming men for a lot of our problems. KAM, The Bear, all of that, all of those movements made these men feel incredibly villainized. Imagine having a movement that calls for the unalived of What's happening? They felt targeted. Oh, that's what KAM stands for? Oh my God, that's brutal. And when they ask questions, a lot of us just yell at them instead of genuinely explaining things to them, having the patience to explain it to them. And I understand that it is incredibly difficult to have patience in situations like this, which is why I'm not sitting here telling everybody to go and do this. But those of us that have the patience, those of us that are willing to sit down and listen to these boys talk about why they feel excluded, we need to be doing that. I don't think it's at all that because we're trying to focus on issues that impact other people, they feel like we're disregarding them. I think that the yelling and screaming at them has really impacted them. And I'm not talking about grown men. I'm talking about teenage boys, young men. They don't understand. So what I'm saying- What was that, that Gillette commercial? When was that made? Seven, eight, nine years ago? Demonize now? <laughs> is that we need to build a coalition that helps men and women. We need to find a way to explain to women why men feel the way that they do, and we need to find a way to explain to men why women feel the way that they do in a way that is constructive, in a way that is productive. We need to have dialogue happening right now instead of just yelling and screaming at each other. Because cutting off all men, the 4B movement and all that is just going to push them further. And th I, I think it's a good thing. Get us away from these crazy women. Why would we want to be around you crazy women anyways? 
like I said, it's it's almost like natural selection. They feel empowered to do it. We didn't even have to ask them to do it. They feel empowered to do it, which is great. Get the poisonous frogs away from us. Stupid. We don't want to have anything to do with you guys anyways. Gonna happen. And let's be honest, like, what guy's really going for a girl that's, like, leftist? She has, like, the septum piercing, the weird hairstyle, the bangs that start here. <laughs> like... It's dyed blue, you have armpit hair. No guy that has money, status, power, or clout is going for a woman that looks like that. He's going to look at you and think, you're a disaster. There's no way, shape, or form I'm going to be interested in you. We look for women that are fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, no kids, quaint, uplifting, elegant, empathetic, natural, and, uh, and nurturing. That's what we're looking for. And the blue pill, left-leaning, like blue hair, freaking poisonous frog-looking girls, they don't exude that look. Sweetie. Your body, our choice. This is what I don't get. Wait, is she poisoning this man's drink? They're, what's so funny, at least the stuff that I see, these liberal woke women, they all talk about like the violence that the right's been bringing, but I'm like, isn't that kind of violent, talking about poisoning a man? Can divorce their husbands? I'm going to need you to do it today. Interesting. I love it. I do wonder where this is going. And who can't? It's it's the typical it's the typical bull nose ring. You ha you can't make this stuff up. Can't divorce their husband. Look up Aqua Tofana. <laughs> what? I didn't say to do anything with it. I just said to look it up. Right, because that type. All right, you know what? We're gonna look it up. Aqua Tofana. Let's just see what this is all about. Aqua Tofana is a strong poison created in Sicily around 1630. It was a strong poison created in Sicily that was reputedly uh, widely used in Palermo, Naples, whatever. It has been associated with, okay, a woman from Palermo, uh, purportedly the leader of a ring of six poisoners in Rome who sold Aquafana to be murderers. Oh, so we're advocating murder. All right. Pretty smart. Type of message isn't the least bit disturbing at all aqua tofana is a poison so wait a fucking minute so they started another trend called aqua tofana and are posting videos about it on social media including this app that's crazy and nothing's being done about it we're still talking about those particular women over the election situation so y'all running around poisoning the fuck out of your husbands and shit you know what i don't trust nothing moving right now because y'all reckless as fuck for this one watch this so y'all making clear concise threats to unalive people and posting this shit on social media and it's still up i'm so fucking confused and still again no one is protecting the children also and if you don't know what Aqua Tafana is, let me share this with you. Yeah. Taught to make a poison by her mother. Yeah, that's crazy work, bro. Josh, a drink. Because we're going to add some Aqua Tofana into it. Not poison. Is this, this, way, this, what, is this the new thing? Aqua Tofana? Lord have mercy on my soul. I can't believe they're spreading this stuff and not taking, getting it taken down. 4B movement has gotten out of hand. I woke up this morning and it was heavy on my heart that I owe my brothers an apology. The news made, created story after story that essentially our brothers were deserting us and that they were turning towards Trump and going to vote for Trump in higher numbers than ever seen before, which was a lie. They got, he, Trump pulled the same number of black men as he did his last election. But why? Why did your media lie to you? Why did they try to make it seem like there was this massive divide between black men and black women? I believed all the stories. I got wrapped up in the hype. And you know- Of course you do. People watch the news like it's holy script. If you just watch Fox News and CNN, you're going to be brainwashed. If you just watch what's on TV, you're going to be brainwashed. You have to go out there and have another outlet of media that you consume. Come on.
Why that's so crazy? Because I, Randy B, am the one who was always talking about how the media tries to manipulate us, how the media always shows the negativity within the black community. And um, I'm the one who knows exactly how they manipulate us to create um, separation between us. You see, what I've noticed. Bro, I don't know about you guys, but like, I haven't watched the news a ton, but anytime I'm like over at like, you know, Cass's grandparents' house, my mom's house, and they put on the news, I'm immediately just like, this stuff is so toxic. They're lying, fabricating stories, like making things so grandiose and perverse and just like pushing such a narrative that you're like, how, how does anybody think this stuff is unbiased? It's crazy to me. And I became upset and I did my little. Of course, you should be upset. Because it's, it's absolutely wild what they're pushing right now in the media. Because a lot of people watch this stuff and absolutely believe it. I think we severely underestimated the amount of women around us who will never be able to stop seeking the approval and validation of the white men around them. And y'all really exposed yourself with the results of this election. These white women who voted against our interests, these are the women that we went to high school with. Your interests? What are your interests, per se? That we were best friends with in college, that we played sports with our whole lives. But they chose to listen to their dads. They chose to listen to their boyfriends or their Good. husbands. They chose to put the interests of the white men around them in their lives above. Why is it always white men? <laughs> the interests of women above the interests of minorities, above the interests of oppressed people. I will never be able to wrap my mind around that. You know what's so funny is as you're sitting in your car with your sunroof, if you're so worried about minorities, why don't you donate your car? <laughs> Looks like you're wearing maybe a Kinder Scott necklace. Why don't you donate that to somebody? Why don't you sell that and give the money away to someone? Why don't you do that, Kindle? You can be a highly educated woman, see how women around you are being treated, see how minorities around you are being treated, and still choose to value the opinion of the white men around you the most and vote for their interests. One of the most important women in my life married a rich white man, and she chose to vote for his interests instead of the interests of her three daughters. The silence from all of these women. What? What? What are the daughters missing out on? Is that the whole abortion thing? On the the earlier episode, literally today, go back and watch it. It was a doctor talking about he did twelve hundred abortions, and maybe under twenty of them were like actually needed for R words or incest or something like that. Literally, the rest of them were healthy babies. And he's like, I'm literally unaliving healthy children. Like, it's absolutely brutal. So is that what we're really talking about? Well, maybe this movement now will make you guys be a little less promiscuous, which I think might be a good thing. We might bring back the nuclear family. We might bring back two-parent households and get rid of... Single mom. I think getting rid of single moms could be a very good thing. Women right now who could not bring themselves to vote for Harris, to vote for another woman in this election, is shameful. And we will not forget. You know, women have never had as much. That, that's uh, okay. And here's here. We'll, we'll go over the study that and we haven't touched on it in a while. Aqua Tofana. That is boy. Howdy. If that ain't some crazy work right there. Aqua Tofana talking about poison. Can you imagine a man getting online talking about that? Fatherless home statistics. 60% or 63% of unalivings. Um, self unalivings, homeless and runaway children, 85% of all children who show behavior disorders, 80% of R words, 71% of all high school dropouts, adolescent patients, 70% of juveniles, 85% of all youth sitting in prisons. Like, teens without involved fathers are twice likely to drop out of school. Girls raised in fatherless homes are more than twice likely to become pregnant before the age of 18. Teens without fathers have an increased likelihood of substance abuse. So, like, the, ep the epidemic we really need to be talking about is the single mom epidemic. Because let's look up some stats. Percentage of women that are single moms. I bet it's going to be. In 2023, 21% of all mothers in the United States were single mothers. However, the percentage varies by uh, race and ethnicity. Black mothers, for, or here, let's get into it. Black mothers, 47%. Hispanic mothers, 25%. White mothers, 14%. And Asian mothers, eight, Asian mothers, 8%. That is insanity. The percentage of births to unmarried women in the U.S. has increased from 18% in 1980 to almost 40% in 2022. That's the real problem. That's the real problem. Single motherhood. We need more nuclear families. We need more two-parent households. Because clearly, what you ladies have been doing ain't working.
And if it was working, we'd be like, yo, yay, the matriarchy, but so far it's not been working. So, I, I don't know, maybe something needs to change. Maybe it's just me. Am I stupid for this? I feel like that's common knowledge. You look at the stats and it's like, I don't know. Loki, does somebody want some beef jerky? Sit, wait, free, go to your place. Absolutely wild to me. But th that stat right there is nuts. 20 something percent of all women in the United States are single moms. And there's so many people in prison. Like, let's look up the percentage of um, percentage of men versus women in prison. Let's just look that up. Look at the gender disparity here. Female, 6.7% of inmates. Male, 93.3% of inmates are men. And it's mainly because women are raising these young boys. And they don't know how to raise them to be men. Only a man can raise a boy to be a man. That's just my opinion, though. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebooks, the four pillars of personality, and the four steps to style. They make you irresistible to women and respected by men. But I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.